Okay, we're ready to start coding now. Remember, you can pause the video at any time if you need to see the code, and there will be the code nice and big on the screen at the end if you need to pause it then and have a closer look. Now, one of the things that people do by accident is they start to click on the code tab and then they realize, well, hang on a minute, I've got no motion to, uh, blocks. I've got nothing to say. My sprite needs to move. It gives you a clue here. Motion, stage selected, no motion blocks. That's because if you look down here, I'm still clicked on my backdrops. So I need to make sure that I click on my sprite. And as soon as I do that, I should have, there, there are my motion blocks. They've all come back again. So if whenever you think, I can't see my motion blocks, is because you've accidentally left it, clicked on the backdrop. Okay, so we need to start moving this sprite around. Now we could use, in the events, we could use when the keys are pressed, and we could do up, down, left, right, and move up, down, left, right. However, I'm going to show you a little bit of a smoother way to get your character to move around. Um, let's see what, I'll show you what I mean. So if I had when the up arrow pressed, and when the down arrow pressed, and then we can do left and right, or right and left even. <laughs> And I'm going to use the motion blocks to say, well, I want it to move 10 steps, but first of all, it's going to have to point in the right direction. So let's point, if the up arrow, we want it to point up and move 10 steps. Um, I can then duplicate this um, and have the down arrow, I can make it move down. And duplicate again to move right and duplicate it again to move left. Now the, the character won't be looking as if he's walking yet because I'm just gonna show you a better way to get this one walking around. So if I just press my arrow keys now, you can see that my character is kind of, when I press and hold the key, he kind of starts and then he kind of goes da -da 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 and kind of jerks around the screen a little bit. Okay, now obviously you can walk through walls at the moment because we haven't sorted that out. But it's not a great way, it's not a very smooth way of controlling my character. Now, especially if I'm going to be avoiding baddies, I want this to be as smooth as possible. Now, the reason it's a bit jerky is because it's using the repeat function of the keyboard. So if you're in um, Microsoft Word or you're doing some typing and you hold a letter down, say if you hold the letter B down, it will go B and then it'll pause for a second and then go beep, 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 beep. That's what's happening here. If I press the up arrow, it'll go up, pause, up, 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 and it's not very smooth. So watch this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my pointing direction and my move, but instead of triggering it with those uh, events, I'm going to start off with a green flag, and then I'm going to tell scratch to always so a forever loop always check if something is being pressed now if what is being pressed well if i go to sensing i can find my up arrow down arrow left arrow right arrow so i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to have four of these one for each arrow make sure that they're all inside the forever loop Okay, um, and they're not inside each other. You don't want them inside each other. Make sure they're just underneath each other. Um, and I can put my other bits of code back in there and you'll see how much smoother it is once I've changed this to down arrow and this to right arrow and this to left arrow. Now remember, I need to click the green flag in order to set this code off. So here we go, green flag. Now look how smooth this is. So there's no delay, there's no pause. It's a much quicker way of getting my sprite to move around. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to make it look like he's walking. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the costume between walk one and walk two. Easiest way to do that is just to add in a next costume. However, what you'll see is it moves so quickly, it doesn't really look like he's walking. So I'm going to add a tiny delay in there by using a weight. And I'm going to put weight 0.1, so only a split second delay. And as you can see, if I now walk, it looks a little bit more like he's walking. Now, what I need to do now is copy that into the other sections so that we can see him walk uh, as he goes up, down, left and right as well. So I'm just right clicking and duplicating uh, the bit of code that I would like. Here we go. Right click duplicate and that's in all of them now. So wherever he walks, he looks like he is walking along. Look at that. We've got our sprite walking around our screen. Off he goes. Da -da 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 -da. Now that you've created your sprite and got him moving around on your background, you might just want to check by walking your character around to make sure that they can fit through the gaps in your maze. Sometimes it is a very tight squeeze and they might not actually fit through. Um, if that happens, what you can do is actually go back and alter the maze, uh, the backdrop, just to make sure that your character can squeeze through. Um, and to do that, you simply click on the backdrop and you can click on the backdrops tab and then you can go in and because you've been working in vector mode, if you select the arrow tool, you'll be able to click on one particular part and just move it slightly so that your character can fit through. Even though we want it to be a challenge, we don't want it to be uh, too hard or unachievable because otherwise people won't want to play the game. And then you can test that out and make sure your character can get through those bits of wall.